the 91st weekly math challenge opens with the quick review of the phi function given any positive integer n let phi of n be the number of positive integers less than or equal to n that are relatively prime to n now before we get too ahead of ourselves i want to make sure that i specifically mention the two main prerequisites for this video which are the euler's totient theorem and chinese remainder theorem specifically the computational aspects of both theorems. If you're not familiar with either or both of these theorems, I highly encourage you to click on this button that's labeled I that should be popping up in the top right corner of the screen to go to my video where I provide a brief introduction to Euler's totient and Chinese remainder theorems. But in this video, I will take it for granted that you have the basic understanding of both. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to recognize J-Love for being the very first person to correctly answer this problem last week. A huge shout out to J-Love. Let us proceed. We wish to find the final three digits of this phi exponent tower, starting with phi of 3 squared, stretching all the way to phi of 2019 squared. So we are concerned with evaluating this mod 1000, and for convenience, I will label the entire thing x. Now, by the Chinese remainder theorem, we don't have to evaluate this mod 1000, that would be very cumbersome. We can simply evaluate this mod 8 and mod 125, then combine the results to find x mod 1000. x mod 8 is very easy to find because phi of 3 squared is equal to 2 thirds times 3 squared. Because from 1 to 9, 2 thirds of the positive integers are not going to contain 3 in the prime factorization. So we know phi of 3 squared is simply 6. So we know we are raising 2 times 3 to some very large power. Now, if you raise it 2 times 3 by a large power, is the entire thing going to be divisible by 8? Well, of course it will. So we know x mod 8 is going to be 0 x mod 125 is certainly much harder. So how do we go about this one? Well, realize the base of this exponent tower, 6 and 125, are relatively prime to each other. So we can apply the Euler's totient theorem, which states that a to the phi of n power is congruent to 1 mod n if a and n are relatively prime. So we only have to compute the top portion of this tower. So this part, let's call this y. So we only need to find y mod phi of 125 to find x mod 125. If you do not see what I mean, again, I encourage you to go to the video I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Anyway, mod phi of 125, that's 4 fifths times 125 or 100. So we wish to find y mod 100 in order to find x mod 125. Let's break it down one more time into y mod 4 and y mod 25 and because y if you look at it y is a phi of 4 squared all the way to phi of 2019 squared so th this is y phi of 4 squared phi of 5 squared all the way to phi of 2019 squared because phi of 4 squared is 1 half times 4 squared or 8 we know y mod 4 is going to be 0 because we are raising 8 to a very large power, so the entire thing is going to be divisible by 4. Now, what about y mod 25? Well, we can apply the Euler's totient theorem one more time, because 8 and 25 are relatively prime, so we can simply look at z, let's call this z, z mod phi of 25. But realize, we have phi of 25 in the base of z, that's phi of 5 squared. So z mod phi of 25 is of course going to be 0 because z is obviously divisible by phi of 5 squared. So that's telling us y mod 25 is 8 raised to z mod phi of 25. So y mod 25 is 1. Now by the Chinese remainder theorem, we know y mod 100 is either going to be 1 and keep on adding 25 to this, so 26, 51, or 76, but we gotta make sure that y mod 4 is 0, so that's telling us that y mod 100 must be 76. So going back up, 
we have found that y mod 5 of 125 is 76. So x mod 125, the final ingredient that we really need, is 6 raised to the 76th power. So everything really boils down to having to compute 6 to the 76 mod 125. But this is relatively easy because 125 is 5 cubed and we can write 6 as a 5 plus 1. And once we apply the binomial theorem to this, every factor is going to go away except 76 choose 2 5 squared plus 76 choose 1 5 plus 1. Because when you expand this using binomial theorem, every term is going to have a 5 raised to 3 or larger power. And all of those are going to go away when you take mod 125. So these are the only remaining portions. And 76 choose 2, that's 76 over 2 times 75. And 75 contributes another factor of 5, which in addition to 5 squared makes this entire thing 0 as well in mod 125. So again, we only have to consider 76 times 5 plus 1, which is 381. So we know 6 to the 76 mod 125 is 381. So that's telling us x mod 125. And since we're looking at the mod 125, 381 is congruent to 6 because 381 minus 375 gets us 6. So now we apply the Chinese remainder theorem for the final time. We know x mod 1000 is either going to be 6 or add 125, 131, add another 125, 256, etc. But 256 is already divisible by 8. It's 0 mod 8. So we know x is 256 mod 1000. So our final answer is 256.